with that we'll get into today. So while I bring up some slides, I'm excited to let you know that this is webinar number 99. So we started these back at the beginning of COVID. Some of you have been on probably at least 90 plus of these calls. I know Ian certainly has. Um, but, you know, it's been a journey. We started early, I think, March 2020. So most of 2021, 20, 22, three really cool years, um, you know, just building this community, making a difference, helping people get more from their ID. Um, those of you who know our vision know that it's all about no, have, helping people in the world know and use their ID. And this is a big part of the use. You know, by the time people come onto this call, they've typically already done their ID um, and they're looking for ways to better understand it and then how to apply it in all elements of their life. And, you know, even though COVID uh, people are pretty much moving on from it, I think for the most part, um, we've had the feedback loud and clear that people would love this community to continue so they can keep extracting value. And I'm more than happy to you know make that happen. So um, let me call up some slides and we'll get our meeting underway. Can you see this okay? Yes, Paul. Great. Great. So the first thing I thought I would start off with, even though we have the topic of what leadership style is going to thrive in 2023, and we will get to that. Uh, I wanted to first just take you through a few things of what's coming up this year, just so that you can mark your calendars and just have an overview of uh, some of the high level plans that we have and, and we're keen to share with you. So let me just take you through a few of these points. The first one is we are continuing and then that makes our next masterclass, which comes up in two weeks time. So for those of you who are new to these calls, we do a bi-weekly cycle, so every two weeks we have a webinar. But the first webinar in the month, we choose a theme for every month. So it's typically wrapped around three different topics, something about yourself, something about you as a leader, something about teams. And we just rotate that every quarter. And then we do the general, we call it living in stride webinar, where we address the topic for the month. And then we, when we do the ID masterclass, which are for people that really want to dig into the nuances of ID and really get quite proficient with understanding, you know, the combination of their, their ID, the different drives, the intensities, and, and the variety of IDs they might be living and working with. We dig into that um, more specifically, and we call that the ID Masterclass. So we have that class, number 100 just happens to be an ID Masterclass. You are all welcome to it um, in two weeks' time. Um, we're going to do something very special in that masterclass, and I'll talk about that in a minute. The annual Sydney conference, uh, we had our first conference last year, and that is open. So that's all of um, our team coming together for the week. But on the Thursday, we open that up to everyone who is a channel partner and a practitioner of ID. So if you've done the ID certification program or you've been on these webinars, you just have a real passionate interest in ID, you're welcome to come to that whole day and it's the day of just learning about ID. Um, it's very interactive. Last year was just a buzz for everybody. And then we finished with a gala dinner that night, just celebrating, you know, I guess a little, it's a little bit of a illustration of what the world would be like if people could really shine and be themselves and they understood that about each other. And you see that play out for that entire day. So you are all welcome to that. Now, I know there's a whole bunch of people from the US and it's probably out of reach for you, but um, some of you will be there because you're on our team and some of you will um, no doubt, you know, maybe have reason to think about coming down here for work or whatever. And so I share it with you in case you can somehow sync the dates and make it work. Um, and again, I'll talk about something with that in a minute. When we come together as, in, as the masterclass in two weeks time, I'm actually going to take you through some of the program that we're going to cover. It's pretty exciting what we've got um, planned for that particular day. Um, for those of you who are, who are interested in doing a deeper dive, studying and learning more about ID quite intensely, we have a three-day ID certification program that we run. We uh, This year, we've slated to run it three times. The next class is coming up on April 19, 20, and May 3. They are US states. And so if you are in Australia, it will be just the next day. So it will be April 20, 21, and May 4. Um, the only thing is the timing doesn't always work for every, you know, every theatre in the world. So 
we try and accommodate where we've got the bulk of the um, the demand, which mostly we have the American market, and then we have the European market, and then we have the Asia Pacific market. This particular timing does suit the Asia Pacific market as well as the West Coast of the US. So if you are interested, please reach out to Ian, let him know, he'll send you the brochure and all of the details and um, get you registered for that program. But it's a brilliant program. In fact, the course that just, well, we're in the middle of it. We just did around the two days last week and then there's a two week break and then the next day is next week. And there are some people on that program who are actually on this call and they've done it for, this is their second time doing that program. And it's been brilliant for them because this time they're picking up some of the nuances. So keep that date in mind too, if that interests you. One of the themes for this year for us as a business is all about building a learning culture. And I know most people talk about, um, you know, having a, a thirst for learning and they thrive on being intellectually stimulated and they have a drive for continuous improvement and so on. But one of the things we find is, do they really apply the learnings? How do you make the accountability really happen? And so we are looking at how do we build that real learning culture? And one of the things we're going to do to help bring more accountability into this um, and make it more appealing is to reintroduce our ID belt grading system, which is a belt grading system that follows the martial arts principles. Um, but we're going to do that with a very different version this time. And in fact, one of the things that's been asked for by those people who have made it to black belt is what happens for us now that we've reached black, is there something beyond black? So you will see when we talk about this at the next ID Masterclass, we have a fantastic program for what happens beyond black, um, as happens in martial arts. You know, there's a whole bunch of dance that, that you go through or additional gradings that you go through. And in fact, um, at our conference in Sydney, I've actually, uh, I have a speaker coming along who will be both speaking and presenting, who is a ninth Dan in Taekwondo. And you don't find a ninth Dan probably in anything <laughs> very much. Um, so it would be very interesting to have his perspective on life, not just on martial arts, but the parallels between that and uh, and life and the difference between, you know, what was it like to become a black belt at something and then take it all the way through after 55 years of dedication to now a, you know, being a ninth Dan and a grandmaster in, uh, in that particular discipline. So I, if you're in Sydney and you'd like to really get challenged by, you know, a heightened sense of excellence and the approach you might take to your own life, I'd um, definitely make a point of coming along on March 30. Um, all right. And then the, uh, the next thing is uh, I can appreciate that, you know, if you're in America, you'd be like, okay, we want one of them too. So we will look at a, um, at a masterclass, like a full day masterclass in the US, more than likely in California, because that's where the bulk of, you know, um, of all of our people are. We, it's harder in the US because people are scattered everywhere. But I hope with enough notice, if people have enough interest and they're living not too far away and they can maybe arrange other reasons to be there, um, we'll be able to have people come from all over to um, that particular meeting in October. We'll confirm the dates with you shortly. I'm just working through with my team, but we're looking at around that time of October. I don't know, I think they're sort of looking good. So we'll um, confirm that for you in our next masterclass. And then finally, for those of you who are already practitioners on ID, I know a lot of you come to this webinar, but there's also been a request to dig deeper into how do we actually use it with like coaching and teams. And for those of you who are, who are actually the practitioners doing that work, whether it's in your own business or whether it's within client organizations, we are going to put a new community together this year. We'll launch it in April. And that's for our ID practitioners to really dig into that. And again, that's um, you know by demand as we've recently had conversations with a whole bunch of you um, that's been something you've asked for. So we're putting it together and they'll meet on a bi-monthly basis. Are there any questions before we move on? Just remember you're on mute and you might need to demute yourself if you have a question. Yeah, uh, Hitesh here, I had asked a question previously. Um, but yeah, I, it would be great to have a portal or a web page where I can just 
put score of someone and then try to get an education okay what that that what does that score mean and how i can work with that person so there are ways to do that using our platform hitesh we already can do that and i think ian's probably making a note as we speak to connect with you and just show you some of that offline so you can see how you can do that okay thank you you're welcome anybody else All right, so let's move on to what we have for today. One of the um, one of the rituals that we have within these classes is a principle called the peak performance indicator. And the peak performance indicator is a we we uh, illustrate it to you like this, but really it's the essence of why these webinars came about. With all of the challenges and the uncertainty that COVID was posing, one of the things that we know is that life dishes up stuff. It's not that the people that live their best life are immune to the stuff. They just have a way of understanding how to deal with it more from a place of being in stride and true to themselves. And that allows them to do life really well. And so we have a check-in protocol that we do when we do this work with teams. We do it this in our own team and we do this as part of this community. I'm not going to do it publicly here because of the number of people on the call, but it's very powerful when you do this in a team and just take a moment, I'll show you the process, take a moment to understand where everybody's at. What it's saying is that this green arrow is where you live your best life. When you are true to yourself, true to your ID, people talk about being in flow, we call it being in stride, being in stride with your true self, your authentic self. That's when you get the very best that life has to offer you. They're the things here at the top of the chart. We use the word like fulfillment because there's a big difference between people being happy and people being fulfilled. And that sense of, you know, Maslow talks about, um, oh my God, it just slipped my mind, but we all know. Um, what's the top of the tree for Maslow? Someone call it self actualization. Self actualization. Self -actualization. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, whatever the, whatever that phrase that you want to give about living your best life. You get that when you are being true to yourself, but life doesn't know that. Our parents didn't know what your ID was when you were born. So there are just these forces that invariably, for all of the right reasons, all because they're trying to grow you and develop you and build character in you, they can invariably pull you out of sync with who you are. And when you move away to the right or to the left, it, it robs you of the things at the top and it, and it causes a level of stress. So it compromises performance and it builds up stress. And, it, and it's very good to think each day about where am I on that PPI scale? So I'm going to ask you now, and you don't need to you know, say anything here publicly, but I think it's important just to check in and say, okay, I've already lived some of today. I might have only lived an hour or two so far if you're in Sydney, but you might have lived a lot more if you're in the US and particularly on the East Coast. Um, what's your number on a scale of zero to 10? If 10 is right in the middle of this green arrow, and a one out of 10 is right out here to the right or the left. You might even be on medication to deal with some of the issues that are coming up to do with your skin or your blood pressure or whatever other ailments you might be enduring. What is the number that, that comes up inside you as your truth for that today? Might be different tomorrow. It might have been different yesterday. But with everything going on, what's your number? The goal, if you want to shine, the goal is to have a number that's of eight, nine, or 10. Wow, you can see that some people putting their numbers in chat in the chat here. Drew, well done, a 10, it's a great feeling. And I'd say to you, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And maybe make a note like, of, well, why is it like that? So that instead of just being happenstance, you can be more cognizant of what's the formula? What is it that you're wearing? What is it that you did to start the day? Is there a process you went through? Is it to do with the people that you're interacting with, the type of work that you're doing, what comes up for you? And when you are an eight, nine or 10, you exude an energy that starts to have the influence that we all talk about having from a leadership position. When you are a seven and a below, um, it either exudes no energy or it will exude the wrong energy. And for all that you can try hard to do the right thing and to be impactful, you're really like revving in the red zone when you do that. But this year, I want to add a new dimension to this uh, graph. In the past, what we've talked about is the connection between your PPI 
and performance and stress. Performance being up the top and stress being this horizontal axis. But what I want you to think about, not just for yourselves, but to really use this in your teams and in your relationships, is this dimension here. When you are in stride, you have the confidence and the courage to show up, to speak your truth, to be more visible. And this concept about not being seen, of people feeling invisible, there's a lot, there's a lot of noise out there right now about that. And they attach different reasons to it. But when we dig into that in the work that we do, a lot of the people, sometimes it's because of maybe who might be dominating around you. But even when that's the case, if you are in a place where you are solid, you feel confident, you're in stride, what typically comes through is a courage with that confidence to speak up and you want to be heard. You want that truth to come out. You have the, the, the courage of your conviction and you speak with, not from a place of anger uh, or defensiveness or resistance, but you contribute more from a place of, you know, constructive conversation. And I think it's a really important dimension that we maybe haven't focused on as much in the past. And it's really sad to me when people are living in a place of fear. I, I heard, um, in fact, this Taekwondo a martial artist, the ninth Dan said the other day, a life lived in fear is a life half lived. And I think that's really true that when people are living with fear and anxiety, that energy is sucking away from being more in stride and, and having the, the wherewithal to show up at your very, very best and make your biggest contribution. So I think this is worth thinking about for yourself and for the people around you, both in relationship with you and in your family and friendship circles, but of course in your work teams as well. Any questions or comments? Anyone maybe relate to that and wants to share that? Feel free to put anything in the chat too if you um, have any you know, comments or questions while I'm talking, I'll keep my eye on it. But as will other people on our call that uh, do a very good job of both pointing things out to me as well as even responding to your messages. So feel free to you know, contribute to the party over there in the chat side of things as well. All Paul, right, guys. Paul, let's, Paul, could I just add a little bit to what you just said about confidence and courage? I, and I, this relates a lot to this idea of where your attention is. And when you don't need to have your attention on looking after you or feeling fearful or protecting yourself or wondering whether you're going to, you know, be lunch for somebody, um, you're you're more comfortable to speak up. You, there's there's more of a tension out there on what others are doing and where you fit in and how it works. And it, it, it there's less there's less defensive energy. And um, it's it's not a matter of cockiness. It's just that there's no need to defend. So let's go out and help. That's right. That's right. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, I love that. You taught us all that that um, little principle years ago. You, you might share it with the team, the three components of the attention app. Can you share it with the team? Yes. It, when, when you, we just, we're looking at when we have a really good time in life, when we have a bad time. And most of the time when we're having trouble, our attention's on poor us and poor me and what's happening to me. And when we're having a great time, our attention's out on what's going on out there. And so the, the little saying became, uh, the, the key to it was uh, attention out, appreciation on, when meaning appreciating what is out there, and agenda off, meaning your agenda off, you're appreciating what's out there and your tension's out there. And it's, it's just, it just means you're in the world. And it's actually the secret to, um, to action heroes when they solve their big dramas. There's, they're always finding <laughs> a wrench or a rope out there in the garage just before they get shot, you know. So attention out, appreciation on, and agenda off. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. All right, guys. So let's move into the topic for today. Um, these were the things that I put in the email as to what we would cover today. So what are the key changes that have occurred in the world and maybe your world? When I was putting this program together for today, I was thinking the changes in the world. And then as I stopped to prepare, I'm like, OK, so there's really two worlds. There's the bigger world and the changes that have occurred and are occurring. But then some of us have had other changes going on. Some of them are positive changes. Some of them are challenging changes. But whatever they are, they can have an effect on you being in stride 
And maybe even the way you've got to go about doing life now to make sure that you can show up at your very best. So we want to talk about what some of those changes are. Today, we're going to talk about the challenges that are occurring in the world. But when we come back to the ID Masterclass, that's that's the forum. If any of you want to share, I think those of you who have been in there, you know it's a very safe and very authentic and vulnerable community. If there's anything you want to you know, unpack with the group, say, well, this is what's happening for me. And with my idea, I'm not quite sure how I best handle that. Has anyone got any ideas? You can tap into the brain's trust of that community who have a pretty good handle on ID to get their ID, uh, ideas. And there might even be people on there who have got the same ID as you, might have experienced something similar to you, and they can save you a lot of experimentation by sharing maybe some of their own experience from the same perspective that, you know, same, same mindset that you have. So when you think about these changes, what's the correlation to your particular ID and leadership style? Are they a challenge? Are they exciting? Do they put you in a position now where you know, you're more advantaged or are you more disadvantaged? And then what do you need to do so that you thrive going forward? We're going to quickly go through some of this today. We could spend you know, the rest of the meeting on any one of these topics. But let me give you some high level and then we'll, um, we can unpack more, certainly in the masterclass. But if there's anything here that some of it is more personal and you want to get some time one-on-one, -on -one, um, please reach out to me or one of my team or anyone here on the call that you feel you know more comfortable to do that with. So let's start with the key changes that have occurred. Before I share anything, I, I'm interested for you just to stop and think, what comes up for you when you think about the changes that have occurred in the world? Let's just have a couple of minutes to discuss that. Who would like to volunteer something either here verbally or feel free to put it in the chat? But what, what are some of the changes, the macro changes that mean we're now in a, in a maybe a different world to where we were, you know, let's just say, let's just call it pre-COVID because that seems to be a bit of an inflection point. But when you think about the last few years, what are some of the changes that have occurred that may be impacting the way people need to think about showing up? Yes, yeah, so Prasan, spot on, hybrid, hybrid working models. You know, they are definitely challenging organisations. And the thing about hybrid is it doesn't matter whether you're a big enterprise or you're a small business, it's bringing massive challenge. Um, and yes, you know, some of the things I'm seeing here, the, the isolation that that brings, the impact on trust that that brings, the humanness, you know, the lack of human connection, how do you now build relationships, build trust, the sense of familiarity? How do you have, how do you give feedback to someone when you've never met them, but you're, they now report to you and you've got to have a tough conversation? Um, you know, that's different. How do you hold people accountable now when they're on the other side of the world? You don't even really know them yet and won't actually get a chance to do that. Mental health has shifted dramatically. I mean, it's now a topic that is front and centre in the, in the minds of many organisations, big and small, um, not necessarily with solutions. They're still figuring it out. They're starting to do some things, but it's, it's now, I guess, accepted that there is a role to play, both for the employees, but also for the broader community. You know, the example that you set, the way that you can help, um, it really is challenging. You can see here, work-life balance. I mean, one of the things I would say is the concept of boundaries. I think that that one piece we could spend a lot of time on. Boundaries used to be automatic because you left work. You know, the old nine to five meant that you had a life that was quite physically separated from work and you would then go home. It gave you a chance to decompress, switch gears and be different. And now you walk from one room to the other, um, sometimes not even, you know, um, it's put all sorts of pressures on families because they're not getting a break from each other. Yeah, lots lots of great contribution here in the chat. Um, there's also a lot of political uncertainty. You know, you look at what's happening in the Ukraine, just, just that alone. But with things like uh, inflation and interest rates, it's changing the way people are thinking about their plans for the future. You know, um, what's, what's, oh, okay. 
You can always count on me, Paul. <laughs> Recession, yeah. I mean, look at the talk about um, people needing to sort of clamp down. I'm watching what's happening with a bunch of organisations that are laying people off. And when you dig into why they're laying people off, it's not necessarily because they're having a tough economic time. It's because of something that was actually predicted four and five years ago with the change in the, the business landscape, especially in technology companies, as there was you know, a, a heightening sort of emphasis on cybersecurity and data sciences and analytics and artificial intelligence. I mean, in the last uh, two weeks ago, I'd never heard of a, of a new technology called chat GPT. Never heard of it. And I think I've heard of it every freaking day since that time, Tristan, you mentioned to me two weeks ago. And when you look at what that does, <laughs> I think some of you know I'm getting married on the 25th of February. Susie even used it to write her wedding vows. <laughs> you know, I don't think they're the ones she's going to use, but it just, and it was incredible. And it was done within about five minutes of switching it on. So, you know, when you look at what artificial intelligence is doing and these new capabilities in companies and the way that that's shifting, you know, the they're like repositioning their, their workforces to accommodate these changes that are occurring with the different technologies. It's um, still really fearful and confusing for a lot of people. And, you know, it just is interpreted as, oh, well, things are, things are going bad because we're laying people off. Yeah, they're also adding a lot of people on in a different area. So it's just a rebalancing in many cases. Um, some people are a little over enthusiastic after COVID and they've got to just rebalance. But it's it's still interesting, the level of uncertainty and confusion and anxiety that that creates. And so against all of that backdrop, you've got your ID. I would say you pretty much covered. The only other thing I, I would say as well, and it might have been in the chat, I can't keep up with everything that you've got, is uh, all right, I can see Amanda, you're watching now very closely at the um, Valentine's Day card that you're going to get from Joel. <laughs> He's probably all over it. If it's something that's the best you've ever seen, just check that, you know, they're saying that with the chat GPT, the plagiarizing software that schools and universities use, can't even tell the difference. That's how original it's it's material is. So, um, Paul, he spent about half an hour yesterday during dinner just chatting to this thing. And then by the end, I'm like, okay, you want to swap partners or something? Like you're in love with this thing? What What's so brilliant <laughs> about it? But actually quite interesting um the other the other area is just shifting social values you know the way people look at what's happened with things like online dating um and and firstly the acceptance of that but now also the the fear around some of that and what's going to start to shift there are so many things that were like embedded ways that we did life that have all been sort of interrupted in the last, uh, and, and, you know, in most cases changed in the last few years. And so there's a new landscape is really what I'm saying. There's a, there's a changing, in many cases, new landscape that we're working on and living on now that we need to think about as we contemplate 2023, how you show up, how you have impact um, and make your mark. I mean, it is different. Um, and particularly with some of the things that, if we just bring it back to one of the very first comments today, the hybrid working model, and for those of you in, in teams and or leading teams, it does mean that you need to think differently about how do you be effective in this changing landscape. And what occurs to me is all of those things that we've just been talking about and chatting about here in the chat, they're happening to everyone, but we're not all the same ID. And so some of these changes, like you think about it, some people's IDs thrive on change. The uncertainty of it, the ambiguity of it, the newness of it, it's exciting to certain people. And there are other people, it's going to take them a long time to really get to, to understand it, get familiar with it, get settled with it, embrace it. You know, it's going to be really challenging. So there's a need for all of us to have heightened sensitivity around that because it's not, it's sort of not fair to me that, you know, when all these things happen unilaterally, but we've all got different we're all wired differently, we're all gonna react differently and we're all gonna succeed differently. And there needs to be a greater level of tolerance from all of us who have some heightened self-awareness and understand this concept 
we this is our time guys to have a real impact to help other people have that tolerance as well and to you know not be as frustrated by people that aren't coping so easily the simplest example that i think is a great metaphor at this time of year in australia it's it's the start of a new school year here in australia most kids went back to school this week some of them are still to go back they start today and they start tomorrow but for you know for many of us the new school year or the new year is a fresh start it's exciting but there are kids that it is like they've got enormous anxiety over it and it's an emotional catastrophe catastrophe to them they don't get settled they've got a new teacher they were just getting used to the last teacher from last year all their friends the rhythm of the way the the classroom works and now it's all new so there are kids that are going to shine in the very first week and are excited and there's going to be kids that not only struggle for the next few terms of school they're going to get labeled as having special needs or you know emotional insecurities or whatever it might be because nothing's actually wrong they're not worse than anyone else they're just not they don't you know cope with the change as easily and teachers and parents that are more aware of that can probably help accelerate that journey or just show more sensitivity to it the same principle applies i think with what's going on out there in the world right now um, everywhere else so um when i think about leadership styles and i just throw a few different leadership styles here you might want to think about yours and just where are you at we will unpack this in the master class but but we go everywhere from people over here that these people are slower out of the gate with change unless it's a change that they're introducing you know so when when change is something that you're in control of people over here on the left can be really fast with that change because they've thought it through planned it out they've and it's what they want but when it's being done to you and more the point you don't even understand what a lot of it is you you're not you're not going to buy into it until you do so it's harder for these people to buy in this is like the kid in, new kid in the classroom right now that's going to need to get all their ducks in a row get familiar with the teacher and their and their classmates and everything before they really start to blossom people over here to the right they're the opposite they'll buy in really quickly the newness of it excites them the ambiguity is okay it's it's fun and that actually can make it worse and they can be at risk of making it even harder for the people on the left because people on the right and i'm just being this one idea i mean people that tend to go more to the right they go oh it's easy don't worry about it and that makes the other people feel bad because they're like but it's not so easy and i do worry about it so is something wrong with me you know um, but these people can also get bored really quickly. So they're fine for the first term or the first stage, and then they're sort of moving on. So it's not like there's a perfect idea to have. We're different in that journey of life and in that journey of change. So it's just important to understand where you are, how you react, and, and how you come across to other people who might be quite different to you. Invariably, they will be nothing's wrong with you is the thing I would say if you are finding it really challenging and people people are quick to put labels on and say well that's because of everything you've got on your plate right now with other changes going on in your life no even if there were no changes going on based on your ID you might still be having a challenge with it so don't be too hard on yourself using all these other things that might also be easy easy sort of um explanations you know to, to draw on it just compounds it and makes it even tougher for you does anyone have any questions or comments before we move on oh. so can we go, go on sorry go. yes i i remember it's been a, a number of months ago that in, a, in one of our sessions, we talked about the greatest challenge that each one of the, the drives has. And I remember the complete drive had a real challenge with change. And I'm, I'm wondering if that information that we talked about that day, what the, what the greatest challenge was, if that might be helpful in this situation. Yeah, it's a good point, Judy. What I'll do is I'll pull those slides together and um, add them into this deck when we send it out. So 
for those of you who are new to this process, because you've registered for the webinar, then we automatically send you the recording of this webinar and the slides that we used each and every time. So even if you can't make a particular day, I'd say you still register um, because then you still get sent the slides and the recording. You can listen to it all in your own time. So don't let don't let a conflict of time get in the way of the continued value. Of course, we love it when you're here because you know you can be part of the chat and there's just something that happens when you contribute live as well. But um, but don't miss out altogether. So we will add that in, Judy. Thank you for the reminder. Can I just ask, is there anyone that with all the changes that are going on, are there people that feel more advantaged or disadvantaged? Has anyone already had that reaction um, that they're willing to share with the group today? Well, I, I can comment um, from my ID. Um, when we went into lockdown, um, I thought I, what the books I was writing, publishing was good enough, but I live with a, a wife, uh, my wife is a 6482, and she'd been quietly saying to me, probably not quietly actually, that they're not good enough and I need to sit down and actually look at them uh, more professionally. So once we're in the lockdown and the business world slowed down, then that's when I made the comment, it was a time for me to get real. And I realized that I've got to manage my ID rather than my ID manage me. And what that meant was that I had to sit down and that's why I clicked out and didn't participate in um, these webinars for a while. Um, I had to rewrite my three titles using a, a different um, executive editor. And that's tough because that's information day after day after day and process. But at the same time, I knew that I was behaving, I was feeling this way because that's my ID and this is everything that's counterintuitive to what I naturally want to do. So that helped me. Thank you, Paul, for getting through. That's why I stepped out. Okay. But the other one I laughed at is, I don't know whether you know this, we've had a little bit of a weather event in Auckland and people have died. And um, two days ago, the search and rescue turned up on our doorstep and said they wanted us to evacuate. <laughs> because we were in risk of losing um, life and limb and house and that. And I, I stepped into my ID and said, no, 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 I'm not leaving here. <laughs> this needs someone who can improvise. So from two o'clock in the morning right through till next day, uh, I was out there putting together and saving, um, rescuing the property from serious material damage. So much so that the uh, three parties, the council, the search and rescue, and the geotechnic people photographed what I'd built in the night because they thought it was impressive. But basically, I knew I was just improvising to get through. Okay, good on you. <laughs> good on you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And everything okay now for you? Well, we've lost one office and all of the computers and all of the technology mm -hmm. and the carpet and all of that. But that's just insurance stuff because wow. we've uh, got everything up in the cloud and servers are in another office complex. Okay. You know, we've kept our data, which is yep. really what it's all about. Thank, Thank you, you for asking. Well, as you can see already, this is your time to shine. You've also lost the prime minister, so you've got a lot going on over there. So um, um, Amanda, can I just ask you, you said that you feel disadvantaged due to the speed of change. Can you maybe share a little bit more about that with the, with the group? Yeah, sure, Paul. Just um, thinking that um, you know, IDs like mine um, might not be processing. We don't process change as quickly um, as others, and, and there's a lot happening out in the world and in business world, and, and it's kind of difficult to sometimes keep up. Um, it could be a, a mixture of <laughs> uh, the world changes and in my personal life and in my personal mm -hmm. business circumstances, but. Um, yeah, you were saying, you know, if, if someone feels more advantage or disadvantage, and I definitely feel that it's hard for my ID to keep up with changes and how quickly I have to move and, and not, not have enough time to process what's going on around me. Okay, thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Anybody else? Can I comment on Amanda, what you're saying? Um, to be perfectly honest, when you see a profile like me and I'm running a leadership development program um, and the MD or the CEO or whatever says, that's great with that person, I say, no, 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 that person is a flip-flop. They'll flip in and they'll flop out. 
whereas the Amandas of the world are the people we've got to work with because they will take a while to change, but then they change for the better and they keep the change on course and enable it to fulfill its full potential. So no, when you compare our two IDs, you're the ones that create and allow the ultimate long-term change, which is the important one. Yeah, it's such, it's such an important thing, you know, that just because people are, like resistance is often the first step to them buying in. It's not that they don't want to be a part of it. They just are going through the process of understanding it. Okay. Anyone well, else has oh. found that a particular, they feel more advantaged or disadvantaged? Particularly if someone feels more advantaged. Paul, perhaps, uh, uh, Savas, 4557, uh, perhaps a, a different view um, if you will, instead of thinking about being advantaged or disadvantaged, yeah. my sense around that is recognizing, acknowledging, honoring, and being true to who you are is not about being advantaged or disadvantaged. But rather, it's about simply having strategies to manage what shows up in the world. Um, I, I don't, I, I think that. The, the 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 lens of being advantaged or disadvantaged can can cause someone like Amanda uh, to feel disadvantaged, and I I don't I feel that puts a person like that in a in in better commas in a in a disadvantaged position, and I don't think they're disadvantaged. I just think it's different, and and I think it's it's a matter of you being okay with being a, whatever the number is, that's irrelevant. And uh, honoring that, being true to that, and then having strategies to manage, well, how do I make the most out of what's happening in life? Because life happens. We have no control over that. So that's, uh, yes. Thanks, Joe, yes. It, it is, and um, it's actually, language is, is, is critical, but yeah, that's probably enough for me. Thanks, thanks, Paul. No, thank you. So I get you to come and run the class service. That's, I mean, that's sort of exactly where we're where we're going with this. Is there's a difference between how you feel as a result of the change, and that's why I make the point. How do you feel? Do you feel that you're in a better position or disadvantage? But it, it's not really about ID. I mean, there are people that have got an ID here to the right, and you think, well, they'd be really good with the change. They they might feel disadvantaged, and there might be people over here to the left that you might think would normally be really, you know, um, having a tough time with the change. And they might feel like, actually, you know what, I'm in a better place. And a lot of that will come down not be to what's going on out there in the world, but what's going on in here and how they calibrate it all to map to their ID. And it just requires more self-awareness, more heightened self-awareness. So in light of the, the time, just to keep moving forward, I'll just take you through with, the, with what do you do now? Like, where is your idea going to thrive? And what do you do to ensure that it does? These are just some little steps I thought I would call out. Um, some of these you already probably have tucked in, but there might be some here that you need to just maybe, you know, uh, step up a little more on. The first is to know your ID. How long since you've read your ID? I would really encourage you, don't take your ID for granted. We have people who you know, I'd say our best, um, the people that I see as their best practitioners of ID, typically reread re re their ID every six months. And they say all the time, there's always something I get from it, you know. So in times of turbulence, like get jump on the platform, download a report, look at a video, re jump on one of these webinars, but lean into it to learn more and look for some of the nuances. But then the next part is so important. And I think this has a lot to do with how you feel about accepting your ID. When you look at your ID, there still might be parts where you go, I wish I wasn't such a high, you know, authenticator, completer, verifier, whatever, or I wish I wasn't such an avoid improviser or an avoid, you know, authenticator, whatever. There's a wish, that whatever that, if you feel that voice inside saying to you, I, I, I wouldn't mind being a little bit more like this person or having a little bit more or less of that, then that's a that's a signal that there isn't yet full acceptance of your ID. And I will tell you that 
a lot of the challenges that I see for people is not that they don't know their ID, but they don't necessarily, they're not in love with their ID. They're not in awe of their ID. They don't really embrace who they are. Deep down, they wished it was a little bit different. And the truth is, no matter what it is, we're going to have strengths that come with our ID and there's going to be vulnerabilities. And you've just got to learn to manage both the strengths and the vulnerabilities, like make sure you're getting to put your strengths to work and make sure you're mitigating the vulnerabilities as best you can. Um, I think that a very important part that I know has been helpful to me, and I still call on it um, most days, is to ask myself when I'm going into tricky conversations or when I'm feeling in a place of uncertainty, where I'm at right now. Am I, am, I, am, I, am I in a place of fear and anxiety or am I in a place of love and courage? They're the two dimensions of the spectrum. And I often have to very consciously shift myself to love and courage. So if I didn't have fear, if I knew the other person wasn't going to react negatively and be resistant, if I knew they were going to be supportive, how would I show up then? And then I recalibrate my conversation accordingly. Um, but it is intentional. And when I talk to people that do life really well, it's not because everything's become so automatic that it's second nature and they don't think about it. On the contrary, it's because they're always thinking about it. Um, get in stride for the reasons we talked about earlier, not just so that you're living with more fulfillment and better performance, but because it changes your whole energy and the way you vibrate and therefore show up to other people. Um, we talked about, you know, being more tolerant and accepting the differences. But the last one here, I would, I'm not, I'm not doing this as a sell to this community. I'm really saying, be careful of who you associate with. You know, if you want to be at your best, but you're in an environment that is negative or judgmental or, you know, somehow in, in a, you know, out of stride state, it will vibrate onto you. So what is your community sort of around you? What's that circle around you that's going to help lift you? And for some of you, it's this community. For others, it might be the gym they belong to. It might be their extended family or a certain friendship circle, um, their church. You know, um, what, what is your group that you can draw on? So even when you're feeling flat, just the belonging and the participation and involvement in that community lifts you up. I'm offering our community to you. If, if that's how we can help you, I would feel honoured to play that role with through these webinars as this year unfolds. But you might want to look at other communities as well, you know, and for you, depending on what it is, in your, is it your family? For some people, the sad part is the, 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 the community that's sucking the life out of them is their own family. There are members in that family with things that are going on that make it really tough. You've only got to think about when your phone goes off, you know, and you see the name that pops up and your reaction, you think, oh, I don't want it to deal with that. And sometimes it's a family member, you know. So whatever the community is that's negative, it's either about how do you fix it up or whilst you're going through working that journey, what is the positive community that can lift you up, you know, re, re charge your batteries and help you be in that really good place because the good thing about a community like that is it's all by osmosis you can walk in feeling flat and without intentionally doing anything all of that energy sort of vibrates through to your cells and somehow you end up in a similar place and from there you're in a better place to go out and face the world so i would really encourage you to think about these points here if you haven't looked at your id for a while go back and look at it and if there's anything that you're still wishing was different, either, you know, learn more to sort it out or lean on me and one of my team to help sort that out so that you come to a place of more acceptance. And then ultimately, you know, think about who around you is that source of support and strength and positive vibration that can help keep you in stride and on your game as you navigate 2023. Is, is there any questions or comments people have before we wrap for today? All right, so when we come back to the ID Masterclass, I will take you through um, some of those new 
developments that I mentioned at the start of today. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the conference we have coming up for those of you who are thinking of coming and as well as the belt grading system. I, because one of the things that's different is it's now open to everyone. Before it was only for people that were consulting with ID. But if some of you want to just make a, you know, a journey out of learning about your ID as a means of self-awareness and making a difference to others and want to have a structured process to that, um, we have we have that for you. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll be digging into some personal examples where people, you know, are trying to navigate all these changes going on either in the world or in their world. And we'll be talking about the nuances of ID and how it can help you stay more in stride in our next masterclass. Thank you for being on the call today. My apologies again for the technical leak up getting into the class. Have a great rest of the week and we'll see you hopefully in a couple of weeks time. Take care for number 100. Number 100, come and join us.